Hey there, it's Ashley with Createful Art and today I'm going to show you how to make gorgeous watercolor feathers. These are really popular right now, especially this for the season, and they make really great artwork for your wall. If this is the first time that we have met. Go ahead and subscribe now so that you don't miss out on any more of these fun art tutorials. We have them every week. This won't take long, so let's take some time to relax and enjoy some art. First of all, you're going to want to get a paintbrush that has a nice, small point at the top. It doesn't matter what size it is, as long as it has that point, you can get fine lines. Grab some watercolor paper. I make sure that I have a weight that is 140 pounds or heavier. That way it doesn't warp when I start painting. This is not an expensive watercolor paper to get. It's a size 9 by 12 and I usually cut the paper down to an 8 by 10 because it's easy to find frames in an 8 by 10 size. You can't really find 9 by 12 size frames very easily. Grab your watercolors. It doesn't matter what kind of watercolors you have. You can make this feather very beautiful with whatever you have. You'll need paper towels and a jar of water. First, let's look at a feather. Notice the shape of the feather. It's rounded at the top and it's elongated, kind of almost like a hot dog. The center is smaller and then it gets larger. As we go down, there's about an inch from the center part of the feather that has no feather parts attached to it on the side, no fluff here. Notice this right here, there's this crazy fluff going on down here, okay? And then notice the colors and how there's shadowing and lighter colors in here. Okay, we're going to do this and we're gonna make it simple, okay? Okay, so things in threes always looks nice on your paper here. We could do one feather or we could do three. And I'm choosing to do three, so I'm going to turn it sideways. If I was doing one feather, I'd turn it this way. And first of all, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to get it wet. And I'm going to draw where my feathers are going to go. This makes it really easy to make any changes that I want. And it's also the very beginning of starting to paint. Okay, so I have a feather here, and I want a feather here. So when I'm gonna make a curved, you won't be able to see this really well, but I'll show you the light will reflect off of it. Okay, and then one right here, okay? The only way this is going to look really good is if they're completely different feathers. Otherwise, it'll just be a boring picture. Okay, see the light reflecting off of that? That's what you want to do just to give yourself an idea of where you're going to place these feathers. Okay, now starting with the first feather on the left, we're going to get the whole thing wet again because it might have dried by the time you're done. And we're gonna make sure we make that shape, okay? So let's look at our feather here. Okay, we have the shape on the side here. Goes rounded at the top. It's a small round at the top. And then it comes back down. Okay. And then you have this small part right here. Okay, now you're going to pick whatever color you want and you're going to do a really light wash. So I'm going to pick a little light blue because these are my colors in my house. Okay, and I'm just going to add some color inside of there. It's going to be really light, really, really light. And while you add the color, it's just going to move around where the water is at. Okay, and you don't have to do your center yet. On the bottom, you're going to get some color on your brush. And you're going to make this part right here. And it's going to be like just crazy lines going everywhere. And they're going to overlap. So see how I'm using the tip of my brush and I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on it. 
and I'm really being loose with it, I don't care where these lines go. If you're really tight with the lines, it won't look realistic. And I noticed that it's not dry, so I'm gonna move on to the next feather and I'll come back to that one. I wanna wash out my brush real good, okay? And I'm going to paint where my feather is going to be with the water, again. Okay, this one's gonna be slightly different because I wanna add interest. So I'm gonna make it kind of curve to the left here. Maybe I want this one to be a little bit bigger or something. You know, give it some variety, be creative. Okay, and anything that you don't, you decide you don't want, you can just take a paper towel. And okay, now you're going to add your color. And remember, it's just a tiny bit of color and it'll go a long way. We're just barely, barely putting color on there for now. You don't even have to color the center if you don't want, because like this one, the center's white. But we can add color or we can leave it open. It does not matter. It might be fun to have it open just for a different look. If you're going to do that, you have to make sure that it's dry in the center there. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to the next feather and I'm gonna wash out my brush and then I'm going to paint the feather that I want. Okay, I'm gonna make this one pink. Um, maybe this color pink. These are the colors of Create Full Art. Our website, you can go to createfullart.com and see our new website designs and they're also my favorite colors and I have them around my house. This should be dry over here. Okay, make sure you have most of the water off of your brush and then get your color for this one on your brush. Make this nice and dark, okay? Nice and dark. And I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on my brush. Okay, now notice at the top here how it kind of bled a little bit and it's not skinnier at the top. All I need to do is take some of my water, go like this, and let it bleed a little bit, and then keep that line on the left, how it is. See how I can use my brush to kind of take away that. This time though, I'm making little short strokes, and I'm gonna let it bleed a little bit with those short strokes. See, I come in here and I'm adding color along the middle part of the feather. And I'm using the tip of my brush and I'm barely putting any pressure on my brush. Okay, and then the other side as well. Okay, a little bit of lines through here to the very edge. Okay, I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to add a little bit of the pink color down here in this area right here. And I can add even a little bit through here. And you really can just get creative and do what you want. Just have fun with it. You can add designs to it. Like you could put in circles. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next one. This one, I'm going to make it striped. So I'm gonna get some pigment on my brush and I'm going to add, this will dry lighter. But I'm gonna add some water and stripe formation through here. Okay, and I'm gonna leave the center 
alone as much as possible. And I can take some pigment from that. Pigment is just the color of the paint. If I keep borrowing from this, it'll soon look the same throughout. Add some to the point there. See how fun it is to see the different ways it can turn out? It's just really fun. I love it. Okay, same thing down here. Just squiggly lines going every which direction. You can have more on one side than the other. You can go up a little bit more with it. Like that. Just make sure you get your squiggly lines in. Okay, you're gonna let that dry so you can put the center in. Let's move over to this one. Okay, this one's nice and dry, so let's start with the center. And this one's gonna be a little more detailed than all the rest of them. So see how this one goes in? This one kind of has a little bit of curve. We'll add a little more curve. We want this one to come in. I want the curve to go like this. All right. Then what I'm going to do is, of course, I want to have a nice bottom part. I'm going to start making strokes going up. I am barely touching my paper right now. And I know when it needs water, when it starts skipping or it just seems dry, you don't want it to skip lines. And because of the shadows and the light parts on the feather, it doesn't matter that there's gonna be some lines darker than the others. That's what's really fun about going with the flow is because as your pigment starts getting low, it gets lighter and then you add more pigment and then it's darker and it just looks natural that way. And then up here, I'm gonna do the same thing and kind of go around it, fan around the top. Just slanted lines. It's almost like you're drawing. Taking your brush and going back and forth, back and forth like this. It is okay that one side of the feather is thicker than the other because then it makes it look like it's turned. This time I'm going to add a little bit of orange on the bottom. Just quickly crazy lines. And I'm going to let that orange be here just a taste of it and then my pink see I'll just let that pink spread with the water I can come back over here and add my line to make sure I don't touch that down here. At the top there. Now I'm just going to give the indication that this there's lines through here. Now you can look at that and you can decide anything you want to change. You just go ahead and change it. Make it yours and be creative. Once you feel like you're done, go ahead and sign your work.
When you're done, you can put it in a nice frame and put it on your wall and decorate your house. Or you could just put it in an art journal or wherever you want to put it. But I hope you had fun and I hope this was relaxing for you. If you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out and it helps spread these art lessons to more people. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any more of these weekly art tutorials. Be sure to head over to createfulart.com to find more lessons and to sign up for Grateful Christmas, which is 12 art tutorials that show you how to make Christmas art projects. See you next time. Bye.